So the thing that people uh, look at firstly when they're identifying grasses is the flower head um, and most grasses flower between April and August I suppose. Um, there are a few grasses that uh, flower all year round so annual meadow grass is an example of that uh, but most grasses um, are confined really to spring and summer, mainly summer. Um, so if you're going to do some grass hunting um, the summer, spring summer is probably the best time to go out and have a look. Um, so the thing that people notice most I suppose is the flower head and um, the flower head comprises of um, the panicle which is the overall thing um, and these which are spikelets um, and this is a great species uh, which is soft brome to look at the spikelets because you can actually see them quite clearly so for example this grass here this fescue the spikelets are far smaller and so it's more difficult to see the features um, this spikelet here, I'll just remove this from the flower head, uh, this spikelet here actually comprises of lots of different flowers um, and you'll notice that it has these little protective shields um, and at the bottom, the bottom two protective shields are the upper and lower glooms um, and these vary in size. The, um, the lower one tends to be slightly larger than the upper one. Um, so if you have a look for those. And then within the glooms you have lemmas and paleas. Um, the lemma forms the outside protective um, shield I suppose um, and then the palea uh, comes on the inside and then the floret, the flower, actually exists between those two shields, um, those protective kind of membranous um, things. Um, and on this particular species um, you'll also notice that the uh, lemmas have awns, so they're providing these little spiky bits. Um, so this spike actually comprises of lots of different flowers or florets uh, that are all protected by these little shields. Um, so next time you see a grass, see if you can find the individual elements. Um, and in most um, like grass identification books or even on the internet, you'll find uh, a diagram that will highlight all of the different sections. Um, and sometimes the length of the glooms and the paleas and the lemmas, um, the shape, whether they're hairy or not, whether they've got awns, the length of the awns, all those things vary depending um, on what species you're looking at. So that's um, quite a nice thing to kind of get your eye in on. Um, and you'll notice that some um, of the spikelets are larger than, the other, than others, some are hairy, um, some are on stems which are um, pendulous like this one. Um, sometimes uh, they're adpressed to the main stem of the plant. So there's lots of different features to look at when you're uh, looking at different grass species. Um, so uh, have a look at the description I suppose in your book and, and, um, and then try and um, see which species fits. Um, uh, so the grass uh, flower is born on a, a stem and as you can see this species is particularly tall or this sample is particularly tall. Um, Grasses are characterised by hollow stems. So again, uh, like if you uh, compare grass to a bamboo, which is a different species of grass, uh, you have the hollow stems and then you have solid nodes between uh, different sections of stem. So uh, the nodes can be quite characteristic. Um, some species have hairs on those nodes and some are hairless. Um, so that can be useful to look at. Uh, and then you can also look at the leaves and the leaves can be really variable and actually if once you start getting your eye in you can identify grasses just by the vegetative um, structure so just the leaves you don't necessarily have to look at this bit up here um, so the leaves can be hairy or hairless they can have slightly different shades of green and once you start really looking at plants in detail you'll really notice those different shades of green um, you can just get drawn to a particular patch and you know exactly what species it is just by that color almost um, so they can be hairy or not, they can be flat blades or they can be narrow needles, um, they can have very obvious midribs, um, so there's lots of, and the coloration, yeah, the coloration can be different, so there's lots of different features to look at. Um, there's another really useful thing to start taking, to, taking notice of and that's the ligule. So between the leaf blade, which is this part, and the leaf sheath, which is this part, so the leaf actually comprises of that whole section, it's not just this bit here. So the leaf blade and the leaf sheath and at this junction here uh, very often you have a membranous ligule. Um, they aren't always membranous, sometimes they can be a line of hairs, um, sometimes they're absent entirely. Um, so that's a really good place to start looking um, 
at when you're starting to identify grasses. So this particular specimen is a, quite a membranous ligule. Um, the sheath can be quite useful, they can have hairs on them. Um, the sheath can either be joined together at the front, so almost like um, a jumper. Um, so the front of the sheath is actually um, joined. Uh, some sheaths, the, joy, the front of the sheath, they can be overlapping like a cardigan or a dressing gown. Um, and then how far that splits as it comes down, that's another thing to look at. So there's a lot of things actually that are going on in this part of the grass which can really help and be characteristic when you're identifying things. Um, the base of the plant can be really useful. So some can have a bulbous base, some species can have different colorations. So purple, um, so perennial ryegrass can have a purple, very often has a purple tinge to the base. Crested dog's tail has a very yellowy tinge to the base. Um, and rough meadow grass can be quite purple as well. So there's some coloration uh, that helps with identification as well. So all in all, there's a huge number of features to look at when you're identifying grasses. It's just figuring out what to look at um, and what really, ha you know, what are the kind of characteristic f features for each species. Um, and another thing that's really worth looking at, um, and it might require a little, bit, a little bit of patience, but to do this, you'll need to get some slight, slightly big samples just to get your eye in. So this is Coxfoot, um, a really big grass. Um, when it's in flower, it grows quite tall, but, well, not all the time, but sometimes. Um, and this is a very keeled grass, so it's very flattened. You can't roll it between your fingers. It's very, very flattened indeed. And when you look at this species, I've not got a good sample there. Oh, here we go, it's better. So um, when you're looking at your vegetative samples, so when you haven't got a flower um, present, um, it's worth noting that this is the oldest leaf, this is the second oldest leaf, uh, that's the, sec the third oldest leaf, and then this is actually the youngest leaf right at the top. So the growth point in a grass is, is around this point here. And what uh, is really key, so you can split pretty much all grasses into one of two groups, depending on whether this youngest leaf here is rolled or folded in the shoot. So when it emerges, can you roll it between your finger? So is it rolled or does it come out like a book and then open out like this? So um, Coxfoot is folded in the shoot. So I, it, I can't roll it between my fingers. It's very flattened. This, this leaf is very flattened. Um, and then Yorkshire Frog on the other hand, which is very soft grass, so you should be able to find this fairly commonly because you pretty much find it everywhere. If you find Yorkshire Frog, you can roll that youngest leaf between your fingers because as it comes out uh, of its um, next youngest leaf, I suppose, um, it unfurls um, like such rather than coming out like a book. So pretty much you're so you can split your grasses into two groups just by figuring out what kind of growth it has. So Coxfoot is a very common species that is folded in the shoot. The meadow grasses are all folded in the shoot. Um, and I'd say they're probably the most common species you'll find that do that. Um, Yorkshire fog, common bent, um, creeping bent, they're all rolled in the shoot. So um, that can be really very useful indeed, trying to find out that.